I don't know if attention is the right way to describe the two different dimensions. If you think of, um, or really uh, several, understanding what's going on in Africa is a mixture of understanding how it looks to different people. So researchers are studying a whole variety of different issues in Africa. And if you just read the research, you would get fairly specific, specialized understanding in certain places, certain problems. And you might also get a sense that emphasized the problems more than the opportunities. And part of what we're doing, I think, in the Africa Summit is putting together better, deeper understanding of those challenges and of the capacities and empirical situations in Africa with a sense of opportunities and possibilities, the way in which Africa looks to those who are developing new businesses. They can be entrepreneurs in Africa. They can be funds in the City of London that are investing in Africa, but in each case, I think their challenge is to connect a realistic picture of Africa based on research-based knowledge to a sense of possibility to make things happen and to create change in Africa. Something the LSE is great at in general, and I think we can become better and better at, is trying to understand real-world issues. Real-world issues always have a context. Something may be global, but it looks different in Asia or in Africa or in Britain. And so to understand things, we need that context in Africa. But we also need interdisciplinary perspectives. Each discipline sheds light on a different part of an issue. If you think of something like financial inclusion, the ability of relatively poor people to be able to benefit from the financial institutions of the modern world, it turns out in Africa this depends a lot on mobile phones. And so there's a media dimension to this. It depends also on government regulation. There's a political dimension to this. And of course on finance itself, an economic dimension. And almost any issue that you think about, youth employment, or entrepreneurship, or peace, these are all issues that need to be understood from the perspectives of multiple disciplines, and we need to be able to connect those different perspectives to each other to understand the real world problem adequately. Well, I like to think the LSE is a great center of its own work, but it's also a node, a hub of connections. So one of the things that happens in the Africa Summit is that the research conference brings students from a variety of different universities, different institutions. I think that we are remarkably fortunate to be in London in a place where we are near to a whole range of other institutions so that people will come from SOAS or UCL or Oxford and enrich the discussion at the conference. But they also come from a range of different African countries. And one of the things that you don't easily see if you sit in London looking at Africa is how richly varied the continent is that the different countries, even different parts of the country, highlands and lowlands, um, arid um, and, um, and jungle, that the different parts of Africa have different ecologies, they have different business characteristics, different levels of development, different government approaches to economic matters. And the best way to enrich what we know about this is to get people who know it firsthand and to build connections to colleagues throughout the continent. Now, the Africa Summit can only do some of this in a short period of time. What the LSE needs to do is to be a, a connection building institution more generally, so that we have connections to public sector, private sector, academic organizations around Africa, where we have something to offer, but they help us to understand better what's going on and what questions we should ask. I think the Africa Summit's terrific, and that's partly because we get such a remarkable range of participants, students, but also presidents of countries, and leaders of big firms from the city. Some of the moments that I appreciated most were hearing from people I would never have otherwise gotten to hear from, but also debate, discussion, in which they try to understand what's going on better. What I like most about the Africa Summit, though, is the sense of positive engagement, that it's focused on opportunities to get involved and make a difference. 
And therefore, it's not the standard representation of Africa only in terms of a series of negatives, a series of problems. It's looking at the opportunities, it's looking at the possibilities and the ways in which there can be business, but also development opportunities for the continent. Some of the great things at LSE that students remember years later or members of the public appreciate are our range of public events. And the Africa Summit is a dramatic example of this. So we have key public leaders that you might not get a chance to hear from other times. We have um, younger, up-and-coming leaders whom you may hear from earlier than if you waited for them to be 60-year-old um, great figures, and who bring new and different perspectives. We have students, especially in the research conference portion, presenting their work, which is uh, the most up-to-the-minute research-based knowledge of Africa. But we also have public leaders presenting the perspective of a government or of a career in electoral politics, which opens up insights into what's possible, but also into where the blockages come from, why things sometimes don't work as we hope they work. So the Africa Summit, over a couple of days, gives a really rich picture of what's going on in Africa that goes beyond what you can read in the newspaper. And it goes beyond the established teaching of any one discipline. LSE has an amazing history with Africa, having educated a number of key African leaders in the past, and we're trying to renew this history. So we have our link with the University of Cape Town, we have a growing relationship with Witwatersrand University, both in South Africa, but we're building links throughout Africa, and uh, there are new uh, growing relationships. The University of Ghana at Legon, for example. The, uh, most important new thing that will happen soon is the launch of LSE Africa Center. The Africa Center, a center in the Institute of Global Affairs, will work not only to do its own research or studies of Africa, but to be a kind of connector, a bridge between the whole of the LSE and all of our different work and work in Africa. And there's a lot of that different work. For example, there are scholarships and programs in the finance department specifically linking to banking in Africa and sponsored by an important African bank. There are programs and links in international development and social policy focused on health issues and health economics and health management in Africa. There are programs in human rights. There are programs in government. There are, these are a bit disconnected, and our goal is to bring them together, and the Africa Center will really facilitate this. Mm -hmm.